about the last six weeks, we have seen and had reports of herbicide damage actually around the state, not just in northern Missouri, but around the state. And I thought I would go through some of the different ways herbicides are getting into gardens and show you some of the different crops that have been affected. And I will say just in the last two days, Monday and Tuesday, I had five questions come in and they're all herbicide drift related. With talking to people around the state, the way that their crops or their vegetables are being affected is one, spray drift. It is drifting into their garden from nearby fields. And up here in northern Missouri, you know, if you live north of I-70, you're in row crop country. And if you live out in the rural area, you probably have wheat, corn, soybean fields all around you. And so it could be drifting in or is drifting in from those fields. Other ways it is also getting into gardens is from runoff. I talked to a gentleman yesterday from Sullivan County that is up here near Milan, Missouri, and he had recently put a weed and feed on his lawn. And we figured out that his garden plants were showing herbicide symptoms due to runoff from the weed and feed, because as we know, it has been raining a lot across the state more so in Southern Missouri, but Northern Missouri is getting rain also. And the weed and feed had run off into his garden, causing his tomato plants and other plants to show herbicide injury. Also, liquid herbicides. If you are spraying herbicides, you know, in a fence line near your garden, or let's say around a lagoon near a planting and it rains, then that can run off into your garden or your planting of whatever it may be. And then yesterday, I talked to a lady from Macon County who is growing tomatoes in tubs, the big livestock mineral tub, and she lives right in the town of Macon. And since these are in the tubs, we knew it wasn't from weed and feed or runoff. We're pretty sure it's not spray drift. And she had told me that she had gotten compost from her son, who is a farmer, and that he had compost, and he had also used pasture guard. Well, if you're not familiar with pasture guard, that contains triclopyr. And that is a herbicide that is often recommended for those hard to control broadleaf weeds. And it has a longer residual than other herbicides. So we really think that her compost that she has in her tubs is contaminated with the herbicide. And that is why she is seeing herbicide injury on her tomatoes. So I think it's important to understand the different ways herbicides affect your plants. Again, that spray drift, runoff, and contaminated compost. So these photos are from seven years ago, but they're really good. So I wanted to show you some photos that came out of Schuyler County. I actually went up there and visited this gardener and you see the edge of a soybean field here. And then there's a little buffer strip and then there's the garden. And when I went, just about everything in the garden had been affected by drift from herbicides. And here you can see green beans. Their green beans were all affected by the herbicide spray drift. Here's a pepper plant out of that garden. And so again, this is Schuyler County. This is about 25 miles south of the Iowa border. This was near the town of Lancaster. So there's a pepper plant severely damaged. These were her onions. Notice the white spotting. There's her cabbage plants. Now you will notice big holes in the leaves of these plants. Those likely are caused by the cabbage butterfly larva or cabbage looper. So those holes are caterpillar related from the feeding damage, but the white spotting is the herbicide drift. Here's her corn planting, but just about everything in that garden was affected. And this homeowner decided to take everything out and they did not start over that particular year. Um, I just think it's important that we know the different ways herbicides affect plants and see what the symptoms look like on the plants. So again, the homeowner did not harvest anything. They removed it all and tilled under the garden. These photos came from Macon County on Monday, and this lady had the tomatoes in the tubs, and she had gotten the compost for these tubs from her son, and he had used pasture guard. Again, the pasture guard contains triclopyr, and we assume that is what has affected these tomato plants. These are severely damaged, but this is typical of what the herbicide will do. I recommended she start over. These are just severely damaged and it's probably not worth waiting for them to come out of it. So she's going to start over with fresh soil and new plants. This came from a farm near Mountain Grove and the landowner had sprayed a herbicide around his lagoon to control weed. Well, his elderberry planting is just down slope from the lagoon 
and Southern Missouri is getting a lot of rain. And we assume that the herbicide he applied around his lagoon had ran off down into the elderberry planting. And the elderberries are pretty sensitive to herbicides. And so the elderberry plants are showing some pretty severe symptoms here. Some, you know, you can see the curling and just the distorted, gnarled looking leaves of this plant. And even the flowers are not real healthy looking. They've been affected also. So, you know, this will eventually come out of it, but it's going to take a while. And I told the landowner that they may not get edible fruit this year, or if they do, depending on the herbicide, they may not want to harvest the berries and they may want to go out looking for wild elderberries instead. But this was a tame planting, again, in Texas County near Mountain Grove. This is an oak tree that has been affected by herbicides, but notice the ring around the tree. Notice the bare ground. But let's just assume that the homeowner sprayed that tree with a herbicide. That's why the, the ring may be nice and clear. No, you don't see any grass or weeds. And then the tree took in the herbicide. The damage was caused and you can see the distorted leaves here. Looking over at the overall tree, you see that the branches, they've lost leaves are kind of bare. It's kind of sparse. So that's something you don't want to do. You don't want to use herbicides around your trees to keep out the weeds. It'd be better to hand pull the weeds and grass and then apply a thick layer of mulch around the trees. Make sure you don't pile it up against the trunk. Keep it pulled away from the trunk, but do use mulch and never use herbicides around your trees.